Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Johnson, and this is Thought by Thought Healing, where I talk about everything related to chronic pain and chronic symptoms because recent pain neuroscience is really showing that it is the brain that sustains our symptoms. So if you have chronic fatigue, chronic pain, chronic insomnia, anything that the doctors don't have an explanation for, then you're in the right place. If we start to target our brain and what our subconscious is carrying, the emotions, the thoughts, the beliefs, then we really can reverse the the pain, the symptom, by understanding how that's playing out in our bodies physiologically. The brain really controls every part of the body. So um, I am a chronic pain coach, and I'm really passionate about getting all this information out here because there's so much hope. I come at it from a Christian perspective, so if that's important to you, then you should subscribe. You're in the right place. This week, I have the opportunity of being on a podcast as a guest with Whitney Wood. Her podcast is called Wellness and Wisdom with Wit, so if you haven't subscribed, you you should. We come at it from the same Christian perspective, and so um, I really really enjoyed this conversation just really nerding out to all the ways that scripture and pain neuroscience really align and all the freedom um, that we have through this god that loves us so much so without further ado actually i forgot i wanted to mention that i love christmas and it is December, and so I took the liberty of putting five things in my background that are Christmassy. So you are stuck with me for the month of December because I'll probably do something cheesy like this every week because I love it. I love it. So see if you can find all five of them. They're pretty easy to find. Um, okay, so now without further ado, um, I will give you our podcast. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey friends, you're tuning in to Wisdom and Wellness with Wit, a podcast for your emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, a space to learn and grow, to be encouraged, and maybe even challenged just a little bit. Let's journey together and explore what it means to experience the wholeness God has for each of our lives. All right. Well, Jen, thank you so much for doing this with me. I'm very excited. We were just talking, but I have not met anybody else in the mind body space who is also a Christian. (laughs) And so it is, I'm just very excited. I think there've been a lot of people I've been able to learn from and talk with who have such amazing and valid insight and information um, that, you know, we all have been learning from, but I think there's just, I mean, the most important component to all of this is the role that faith plays and that, um, the way that God has created our brains and our bodies. So I'm just super, I've been telling all my friends, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I finally found somebody who talks about my body and Jesus. So thank you so much for taking this time. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I, um, echo all of that. It is so (laughs) exciting to be here with, I just having the understanding of the mind body connection, um, you and I both having that. And also, yeah, being able to talk about faith is just such a huge part of this journey. So I'm really thankful to be having this conversation with you. It's so exciting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So can you kind of start us off um, how you got into the mind body space? And just, I know you have your own testimony with um, pain as well. Yeah. So should I start with my own personal story of pain then? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, once upon a time, I was just living my life like <laughs> one does. And yeah. seemingly out of the middle of nowhere, I started collecting symptoms mm-hmm. <laughs> and also just started going to the doctors and going to um, different specialists, going to physical therapists, all the things that you hear anybody who is healed from mind body syndrome talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I don't feel like I need to unpack all that. If you're listening, you probably are in this story too, or or have been in the story where you're going to the doctor and trying to find an answer, anything to make you feel safe and known and to understand what is happening. Mm -hmm. And so I was deep in the trenches of that and pain kept getting worse and worse and and all the symptoms that I had, Mm -hmm. which... um, You know, there's debate within the mind-body community as to how important it is to share your symptoms and how much to talk about them. Right. Um, But it is nice to know for people that their symptom is 
potentially mind body yeah, syndrome. So totally. I had everything from TMJ to stress headaches to fibromyalgia, central sensitization, uh, carpal tunnel, um, just all the things, SIBO, small intestine bacteria overgrowth, overgrowth, insomnia, just kind of the whole gamut. Mm. And it stole my life from me after a while. Yeah. And I didn't know it was happening. And then one day I... This was years later. I remember I was sitting on the couch and I found this uh, physical therapist website that described chronic pain as the fight or flight nervous system being Mm. chronically activated. And I read that and was just blown away. Mm -hmm. I knew immediately that's me. Yeah. Um, Because I hadn't, like most of us, I hadn't saw, I hadn't seen the parallel between what was happening in my life and the symptoms. You know, it's like yeah. you, you, people will often say, I had a terrible weekend and on top of that, I had a headache. Well, no, right. they, they actually happened together and because of one another. Yeah. So when I, when I read that, I just was immediately knew, okay, well, that's me. Yeah. So where do I go from here, right? Because... Mm-hmm. I still hadn't discovered TMS or mind body syndrome and neuroplastic pain. What do you tend to call it, by the way? Um, lately, I've just been thinking of mind body syndrome. Um, but I started mm-hmm. TMS because that's how I learned about it as well. And so, yeah, what do you tend to call it? I I tend to call it mind body syndrome. Also, yeah. I I like the clarity of the mind body. Um, it's just totally. really clear. People don't have as many. Not as much confusion around that, I guess. Yeah, right. Totally. But I did find that confusing in the beginning also to know there were so many synonyms for this thing. So right. I would read yeah. things and be like, wait, what is what is neuroplastic pain? Is that the same as mind body syndrome? Yeah. Is that the same as right. Neural circuit pain. <laughs> totally. And for those of you listening, yes, they're all synonyms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where was I in my story? So I discovered it and then immediately remembered that somebody like a year in the past had told me about DNRS, dynamic neural retraining systems. Mm -hmm. And so I bought that and Mm -hmm. immediately started down the journey of healing through that path, which didn't end up being enough for me. I needed more than DNRS personally. I needed a lot more emotional um, sifting through and working. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was my first introduction to anything related to mind body syndrome. Had you heard of DNRS before? I've heard of it. I've never, um, tried it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been interested. Um, I think with all the other things I've like invested in, I'm like, "Mm, I'm gonna try and do the cheapest route possible. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> but it is, it does intrigue me for sure. Um, and I would be interested in trying it definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I did that and I immediately did experience some, well, I shouldn't say immediately. I should, I should say within probably like three weeks or mm. something like that, I started to notice a slight change in, in my symptoms, okay. which was enough for me to just know this, this is it. Yeah. And actually rewinding a little bit, as soon as I as soon as I actually read that physical therapist description of, you know, fight or flight nervous system is stuck on, I got out a piece of paper and I just started writing everything that I knew that mm. my brain, my body, my thoughts, my emotions were holding on to from wow. my past. Mm. And in doing that, I I did see, okay, I have a lot more now I would call them micro traumas and mm-hmm. and trauma that yeah. I I don't have peace around. I mm. I do not have safety in my in my brain. I wasn't using this type of language at that time, but right. in retrospect, I realized okay, I am I am definitely living in fight or flight because of these mm-hmm. things that happened, and I I didn't know any different. I didn't know that I needed to move towards these things to resolve them. I thought right. 
move on as quickly as I can and forget, you know, these things happened or that this emotion is um, living in me. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think of any of that. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, for a lot of us, it's really scary too. So that's like impressive that you were like ready to go. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think there is something about when you get to a certain place where you're like, uh, okay, I'll do what it, I'll do whatever it takes. Totally. totally. And at the same time, I, I don't think that prior to that, I wasn't willing to, I think it was more that I, I just didn't know how, like, okay, so I have this emotion from this situation. I, what, it, what does it mean to resolve that? I, mm-hmm. I mean, I knew they weren't resolved, but sure, I'd right. seen a counselor or some, but I was yeah. still stuck in this cyclical pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then those those cyclical emotional patterns of fight or flight, that's what we're talking about, fight or flight, yeah. freeze, fawn response. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm stuck in those patterns. And then because of that, I have these symptoms that show up. Mm-hmm. And to me, the symptoms are unrelated to that. So I've got a new right. issue that that adds another layer of the fight or flight you know, um, threat physiology that's happening in my brain and body. And so everything's just piling on one another and it's Mm so overwhelming and confusing, Mm -hmm. but also then discovering, okay, there's this thing. Mind body syndrome was just so much hope for me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you, I I think one of the things that helped me was like the symptom imperative, kind of this idea of like different, pains in your body are still kind of generating from the same place for me that was so I like you're saying like more things piling on I was like oh okay it's not looking at like my head you know my migraines or like my you know um arthritis that was called you know in my hips and my knees and my all that kind of stuff it's like oh this all kind of originates from the same place you know yeah. it's just showing up in different ways that was super freeing for me because it's like okay one instead of like 25 different you know, things you're trying to assess. Right. Right. We don't need to examine every single area of our body that's experiencing a symptom. We get to go to the source Mm -hmm. and, and work from there and and kind of watch them resolve. Yeah. Yeah, That symptom imperative is pretty trippy when I, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting and fun when I'm working with clients now, Mm -hmm. I get to see that show up and, and it's, I mean, it's almost always like second or third session with them. You know, some new symptom has Mm -hmm. come about that's really creative of the brain to, you know, and and seemingly scary. And so, yeah, having that that education piece, knowing that the the brain can move your symptoms around. Mm -hmm. um, It's super interesting and also helps me to kind of calm down too, to be like, okay, Mm -hmm. this new pain in my knee, it has right. nothing to do with the fact that I just ran a half a mile. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. That's Yeah, it's so good. And so now how long have you been um, kind of teaching in the mind-body space? Um, Probably about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And okay. and I I love it. Yeah. I, I absolutely love working with people and hearing their stories and um, just the hope that people start to experience when they start PNE, pain neuroscience education, mm. is just really, it's so freeing for people to realize yeah. there's a way, there's a way out. And it actually also incorporates God's goodness in this journey. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of a beautiful I don't know, combination of all these things that come together when you start to, to understand for me, understanding the science of it, Mm -hmm. um, was really important because if you don't understand the science, it can sound a little woo woo. Like what, totally. what is she she talking about? Yes. hundred percent. Oh yeah. And I don't know about you. I tried some things in, in the realm of desperation that now I look back and I'm like, Oh, that was definitely really weirdly spiritual or like not you know like now I'm like oh okay but when you're just desperate you're like okay I mean 
Yeah, sure. I'll, I mean, to an extent, yeah. but I, I definitely got to a place where I was like, I'm down to try. <laughs> really yeah. try anything. And so, yeah, I've done some, done some repenting and just, you know, kind of talked with God about some of that stuff. But wow, that's long... really cool. Oh, sorry. yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Cause I think for, I don't know about you, it's like when all you're obsessed with, rightly so, is yeah. how do I get out of this pain? It's like, I don't know, my filter was a little, a little off at times. Yeah. Um, there, you know, there was uh, like the medical medium. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, I haven't. He is, uh, he's, he kind of made popular um, celery juice for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. And so I remember I bought his book because he just was talking about health recipes and all this stuff. And then I'm like reading through it. And I was like, oh, he's talking about consulting spirit. <laughs> Like, oh. so he consults spirit for these medical practices. And I was like, oh, and so I, I had just been reading about, I forget which king it was that consulted the medium. I was like, oh, okay. So I threw the book away right away. Oh. And I was just like, okay, Lord, I apologize. Like, this is not, <laughs> you know, huh. but it's, it's just, I, I wasn't necessarily, I just was like, yeah, what do you have to say? Sure. Let me try it. Um, yeah. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Yeah. 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 Um, so how long did it take you to become, um, like symptom free or find, find healing? Yeah, I think, um, well, symptom free is a really interesting way of putting that. So it is. Yes. I didn't like the way that I said that. (laughs) That's why I added healing. (laughs) Yes. Um, I, so, I mean, it was such I know that listeners can't see this, but it was, it was the day, like my healing journey was up and down and up and mm, down. And if you yeah. had looked at a graph of my healing, there was a lot of lows in there that it, it's easy to get discouraged by. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I feel like probably at about six months, I was maybe 60%. Okay pain-free, which means like Mm -hmm. 60% less intensity and 60% less amount of time also in pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was having good chunks of time where I was Mm -hmm. pain-free. And I, and I do mean Um, Mm pain-free. Yeah. And then probably my story is backwards. I think most people hear about curable first and they hear about Mm -hmm. um, John Sarno and Mm -hmm curable right. and then Dan Buglio and that's kind of the route right. and I went definitely backwards and started I actually started creating my own healing program before I found curable oh. and before I found Howard Schubiner yeah. yeah um so I think about eight to nine months I would say I hit that like 80 percent and 90 percent pain-free mm-hmm. which is pretty much considered healed Mm-hmm. Um, we don't heal from the mind body connection. We don't heal from the way that God created our bodies. We don't heal from our yeah. bodies. We don't heal from ever feeling in danger, which is what yeah. this is all about. Right. So there are times that I feel not quite safe and totally. that is always an opportunity for me to go to God. Um, yeah. because we are talking, you know, when it's the mind body connection, we are talking about safety. We're talking about an emotion yeah. of safety here. Yeah. And pain is is an emotion. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. so crazy to think of it that way, but it really yeah. is. And yeah. and th- and that emotion, I mean, we're getting into the science of things, but that emotion is often correct. If you cut your finger, we we do want to have the emotion of not fi- feeling quite safe to put dirt in our wound. Right. <laughs> The pain yeah. needs to stop us from, you know, mm-hmm. washing the dishes without a glove on, et cetera, so that we can heal properly. And so mm-hmm. with this work, we're just trying to rebalance it. But mm-hmm. but in our humanity, in this, the fact that we live in a broken world, yeah. we do experience not feeling quite safe at times. But mm-hmm. I would say at a, at a probably at about nine months, I started feeling like, okay, I am healed. Yeah. In general, I am I am safe. And most of that is due to who Jesus is to me. It's due to the gospel and to his, his love for me and, and his goodness in, Mm -hmm. in my mind, in my emotions, in the, in the way that I'm wired Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, about eight months a year, something in yeah. that in that yeah. area. And and I do like to to clarify that because. I for sure, when I heard about it, I thought I can do this in two weeks. <laughs> I, I'm going to be that person. Girl, yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'm a typical TMSer, which means I match, you know, all those, I can check all the boxes and the personality traits. And, mm-hmm. and one of those is high achiever. And I was like, I'm going to heal mm-hmm. tomorrow. Like, I'm good. <laughs> right, right. Try and stop me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but as we know, um, that doesn't work. When we use the very personality mm-hmm. traits that brought us into pain mm-hmm. right. as a source to get out, doesn't work. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, that's good. And I, we both cringe at the way I asked you that question because I think life is never, the intention of life isn't to necessarily be pain free, like you're right. saying. Um, humanity is painful and there are going to be things that we go through that are painful. And the purpose of pain is to be protective, right? So yeah. like you're saying, if I cut my finger, I should feel that pain so that I know, you yeah. know, or the hot stove analogy, I should take it off the hot stove. Um, but yeah, like learning the tools and the techniques and just the the mindset of of how I've already been created, right? Like I'm already healed. I'm not, I, you know, I keep just speaking this over myself, like I am whole and healed. I'm not looking for something else to fulfill what I need to be healed. Like God already mm-hmm. created us as whole and as healed. He, he is the healer. It's not something he just does. It's who he is. And so since we are created in his image, we, we are healed already. And so I think that's a, uh, but yes, there's going to be times when, when we're, when we experience symptoms that are unpleasant. Yeah. That's just life. Yeah. And that's, that's such an interesting one. I think for some people, we really resonate with that. I am, I'm already healed. That's just so, so empowering to say. I mean, I literally say that just now in echoing you and my, my body and my brain are like, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But some people need to say I am healing and, and that's, that's a little bit more powerful for them. And so, yeah. And, and, and there's something too, about this piece that I love talking about with you because it's so interesting that yeah. we live in a world that's broken and sin is real. And, yeah. and part of the, the reasons that I, that my brain and body didn't feel safe or my brain body, as people call it, yeah. didn't feel safe is because of sin that I have experienced mm-hmm. and also sin that I have committed. Mm-hmm. And so there, you know, there's this, yeah. this, the God, the gospel makes us safe, not because I've never been in danger, but because right. of his grace mm-hmm. for me and his goodness and his love and mm-hmm. just, just all these things that, that, al- that I get to choose to allow yeah. to say, I'm healed. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm okay. My body my body is a hundred percent okay. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with for me. For me, there was. Yeah. I guess I, I did have one SIBO, small intestine bacteria overgrowth. That yeah. test was positive. Mm-hmm. But but now they're starting to look at that more as like there's a lot of people that are asymptomatic that have that would test positive or do test positive on on totally. these. Um, but, you know, I know that there are some people with chronic pain that have something slightly structural, um, mm-hmm. that they're, they're battling both something structural and mm-hmm. mind-body syndrome. Right. right. And that's a little bit more, um, well, there's a, there's a lot to, dis- to discuss there. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah. Um, when it comes mm-hmm. to talking to believers specifically, when it comes to this stuff, um, how do you navigate the conversation about healing? Um, some people have asked me and not in like a, um, uh, defensive way, but just asking like, so like, are you, is this kind of taking place of like supernatural healing or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like any of the other ways that, you know, we've learned to heal. And, you know, I was prophesied over a few years ago, this, it was a good friend and he was just like, 
you know, I feel like everything you're doing is right. And this was back when I was like, you know, testing for everything and doing every kind of mm -hmm. protocol and treatment and all that kind of stuff. He's like, but I don't think this is where your healing is going to come from, but like yeah. you're on the right path to it. Um, and he was a close friend. And so like, obviously I would, I wouldn't say that to somebody who I didn't really know, but um, like now that I'm kind of in this space, I'm like, it's so interesting just thinking about healing in, in specific ways. Cause I don't, well, I mean, I want to hear your opinion, but I like, I don't, I think sometimes in the church we're like, so are you saying that I can't be supernaturally healed, you know, from X, Y, Z and it's like, absolutely not. I mean, I think well, one of the modalities of healing that God has given us is medicine and is, you know, learning about the way he created us, but yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I absolutely believe that there's still miraculous healing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think that when he, he says it was a miracle, it was a miracle. Um, I don't think that it is the same as to what um, you're healing from and from what I healed from. I, yeah. I do think they're, they are, I don't, and, and I reserve the, the right to change my mind on this, <laughs> but at this right. point in time, that's where I stand, that they're different. Yeah. I had this, actually this discussion with my, my Bible study the other night. It's so interesting to have these conversations with people <laughs> and, and yeah. when you haven't had the chance to unpack the neuroscience with people, right. they often think you are saying God miraculously healed you. Mm -hmm. um, and that is God is the healer and he mm -hmm. created my body in a way that I can heal. Yeah. But I think that's different than saying he, he miraculously healed me one day. Right. Would you, do you, do you agree with that? And feel free to disagree. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I do. I, I think he is allowing healing for me in this way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think, but I, I, I mean, I know that it is very like science based, um, and I, and I, this is me processing it out loud as well. Um, do, you know, do I think it's like miraculous that I found this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, I definitely think it's different if I were to, you know, be prayed over and all of a sudden, a, you know, a limb grew back or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, all of a sudden all my pain was gone. You know, I definitely think it's a, it's a different scope, but like, in the same way that I think God has given us doctors and he's given us like that there are, there are these modalities that he has created for us to be able to be healed, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't think, yeah, I don't think, I don't think one is actually like better than the other in a way. I think one could be more exciting, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like a lot more, um, satisfactory, you know what I mean? Like to, to, to see something happen immediately versus over time. Yeah. Um, you know, yes. I do think it's, I think it's God's grace for me that I was able to find this, to learn how it's, it's almost like he's taking us back to like his original design of like how he created us. Cause I think people yeah. love to, you know, there's the science and the Bible, um, arguments all the time. And, um, the more I've studied this, I'm like, this just like solidifies science for me. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't, raise concerns in that way when I'm learning like oh my gosh when he says like I have the mind of Christ and it's and I'm thinking mm -hmm. about like renewing my mind constantly yep and then you think of the whole neural pathway conversation or yeah yep. the fight or flight or the learning how to navigate how I feel about fear and shame and guilt and all this kind of stuff like it's so much more simple than we've been taught to believe maybe simple isn't the word Hmm. No, yeah, simple, not easier, I don't think, but maybe simpler um, when we're literally looking at the way he designed our brains. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting now when I read the Bible, I realize, hmm, there's not much in here about taking care of your leg and your, I don't know, your stomach and whatever symptom you may have, but there is a lot about your beliefs and your thoughts yeah. and, and, uh, what we are, our behavior, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't mean that in a legalistic way, mm -hmm. but he cares about our beliefs and our thoughts and our emotions. And that is where 
um, our dispositions, how we treat one another, um, whether we trust him, which is an unbelievable gift for our nervous system. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Oh, um, and it, and I, I like to be careful with this conversation because I, in, in the mind body community, they often say it's not your fault that you're in chronic pain. This is not mm-hmm. your fault because when you start to understand, oh, this is mm-hmm. my brain, well, that means it must be my fault. I did totally. this to myself. Totally. I, I remember at one point in time, right before I had discovered the mind body connection, mm-hmm. I was in a very stressful situation and and in that moment, all my symptoms just flared. Yeah. And I went back up to my office at the time and I just lost it because mm. I thought I had damaged my emotional system. And I, don't even, I didn't even mm. know what that meant at that time. I just knew, wow. oh my gosh, when I experience emotions, my body is destroyed. And therefore, I've yeah. done something in this For space sure. to destroy me. Yeah. And I love that. I love that about the mind body connection that it's, it is not your fault. And, and that's, um, an, a, a really interesting scientific piece that I love that mm-hmm. when we go through trauma and when we go through tough times, our brain wires itself in a way mm-hmm. that protects you and it is needed and it's yeah. helpful and yeah. it's, it, that's why God created the brain to protect us. Mm-hmm. And so we learn these, these patterns when we're stuck in, especially in, in, I'm going to say longevity of distress yeah. of what is safe and what is not and how to protect yourself. But then it, it is wired and it, it's in your body now that when you experience something, let's say you're triggered by it, yeah. even though you're no longer in the space and or or you're not around the original trigger, but our bodies are still responding as if we are. And that's yeah. where you're talking about, like the renewing of the mind is so yeah. important because otherwise our bodies and our brains just continue to live in the past. Yeah. And there's no renewing happening, but we have to reevaluate. We have to show our brains, hey, look, God brought me through that thing. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I, I like to to do the whole shake it off, do something physical that mm, really shows yeah. your body. Hey, I made it through this thing. I did it. Uh, I am no longer in danger. That's good. Does that resonate with you? Yeah. Yeah. No, it that is really good. Um, it does because I think like even when you think about like anger or, you know, I know we're like rage is is a common term talked about. Yeah. Um, and the way that so many of us have maybe misinterpreted, you know, the don't go to bed angry scripture. Uh-huh. Um, and so then I, yeah, I think I definitely felt a lot of shame when I was re- realizing all of this. I'm like, so you're just telling me I'm like this super unhealthy person and I made myself sick. Yeah. Like that's where I lived for a little bit. Right. And of course, like I started mm-hmm. feeling worse as I was pretty much just being like, wow, this is my fault. Why didn't I learn this earlier? Why didn't nobody tell me earlier? Like there was that whole phase of like, why don't more people know about, you know, that whole thing. Um, and so then I kind of did a deep dive into anger because it's just, um, I am, I am very common people pleaser and I could be very passive. Um, the other day somebody was late to lunch. We were supposed to have lunch and like, they didn't, they showed up really late and didn't text me. And usually, and I'm, I'm usually super laid back about a lot of things, but the way that my week has been, I was uh-huh. so angry. Like yeah. in my head, I'm just like, how dare you not think I'm worth your time to tell me you're going to be late. You don't know what's going on. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I just exploded in my mind, not to the person, yeah. just in my mind. Um, and it was just a funny thing. Yeah. Just, just to think about the way that we think about anger and stuff, because I think we just think it can be such a sin to have intense anger. Um, yeah. And, and if we're not able to fully process and, you know, dissipate that anger by the time we go to bed, it's like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. I'm, I'm, 
I'm a sinner and I'm, yeah, I'm not navigating this well, especially relationships yeah. and uh, I'm not married, but you know, I know a lot of married couples like have that, that issue yeah. where it's like, we're not supposed to go to bed angry, but there's no chance we are figuring this out tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I think that's just a really interesting piece of this all because it is about acknowledging part of healing is about confronting, acknowledging, recognizing, finding those emotions. And we were, we, I I, I mean, I personally was raised in a Christian home and Mm -hmm. I don't know, were you? I'm yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mm -hmm. wait, are you a pastor's kid? I am. I'm PK. Yeah. So I am too. (laughs) Ah, yes. We're the best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah and so that that piece of you know just reading in scripture I don't even think I was like necessarily taught it but I I learned that emotions are are to be ignored or shoved aside Mm. Mm. and and we you know we're not to we're not to fear and my my trigger is fear I know a lot Mm. of people are anger but mine is fear okay I'm definitely in flight mode when I'm in in pain or whatever it's my go-to that or fawn and so switching to recognizing actually I have to move towards these these are these emotions are an invitation to draw near to God Mm -hmm. that for me was a huge change um a pivotal point in my healing is realizing, yeah. okay, when I experience these things, I, I don't need to ignore them. I don't need to shove them under the the nervous system rug. I need to go to God and say, here's my confession, whether, you know, I don't, I don't mean confession as in like guilt ridden, but just like here yeah. it is. This mm-hmm. is this is how I feel. I am mm-hmm. furious that my friend is late for coffee. Right. Right. <laughs> And, and I think that's interesting too, because if you had told me, actually, somebody did tell me once that they thought that I lived in fear. Mm. <laughs> I was just like, "Uh huh, no, I don't." Yeah, <laughs> and just right. in complete denial. Mm. And in reality, I was in terror. Yeah, but we don't. Well. Sometimes we just don't recognize it because we shove it so deep, deep down, and deny it that. Yeah. How was that yeah. for you to, to work through anger then? Was that, it was, did you have, did you have, I don't know, fear about facing, acknowledging and admitting that you had fear or mm-hmm. what'd you call it? Rage. You know, I think at first I had no clue what it is that I felt about anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, I was very passive to all of my emotion. So then I, mm-hmm. I, was very receptive to like, okay, what is, what do I feel? I don't even know what I feel. And so I think realizing how much anger I had, I was just shocked at first. A lot of fear too, for sure. Um, but I think even, I mean, shame was a huge one for me. There was a ton of shame about how I navigated my healing. Right. Of course there was shame about my life before that, but I mean, I think I just, it was, I remember having a conversation with two women who we, you know, have been kind of navigating, starting it together. And I just remember weeping, like talking to them because I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm so embarrassed about how I've handled this. And just, but I think, I think saying it was, was really powerful. Um, because I even realized that up, uh, up till now, there's still some certain ways that I live without even recognizing it because it's been such a habit. Mm-hmm. Um, of self-preservation and, you know, making sure I have capacity for the week that I have or like my big thing. And I went to a chronic pain therapist um, for a while at the Pain Psychology Center. Yeah. Um, loved her. And I got to talk to Alan Gordon um, once wow. on like a phone call and stuff. And so just super helpful stuff. But um, what I really processed with her was like being busy doesn't make me sick. Being freaked out about busy, being busy makes me sick. <laughs> you I know? just had this conversation yesterday. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. And it's so that one for me still now is very like even just I, I felt a little chaotic like before we started because I was like oh my gosh I didn't even like plug in my microphone like because it's been a very busy week and so I have to really really and so that makes me really scared Mm -hmm. so it's um 
I think for me, it's been really recognizing how many emotions I do feel often. Yeah. Um, Cause even growing up, like I was such a tomboy and I hung out with just mostly boys. Like I was an athlete, all this stuff. Boys don't talk about their feelings. So yeah. I'm not going to talk about my feelings, you know? Yeah. And so it's been this whole learning thing. I think like some of it feels very elementary for me, you know, and I started and it's like, I'm a grown woman in my thirties and I'm still sometimes really learning how to actually articulate yep. how I feel. Um, so yeah, it fear is a big one. Yeah. I think I, I don't know. I think I hit all of them. It just depends on when you ask me. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. I read this book. I believe it is called how emotions are made. Mm. Oh, gosh. What's her first name? It's like Feldman. I think it's her last name. Okay. It's probably on my bookshelf. But anyways, she's talking about how our emotions have your fingerprint of anger is different than my fingerprint of anger. So mm. how it affects your physiology is different for me. And also how even fear and anger for me mm -hmm. can physiologically respond the same. And and as I started to understand this this book, there's more to the book than that, but that was just one piece. Yeah, I I began to understand why sometimes it was hard for me to identify and name how I was feeling. I just mm. knew it was a distressing feeling, but I yeah. couldn't have told you. I mean, I I felt shame for mm. years over certain yeah. things, yeah. but in reality, I was not feeling shame. I was feeling fear mm. and vulnerability. Huh. Mm. There, there was I had done nothing wrong, yeah. but I felt this immense yucky shame. And I, and I think yeah. it was because I just paid attention to the sensation and I didn't know the context because yeah. I wasn't working through the things in the way that, again, I didn't know how. So I'm giving myself yeah, grace right. now, but I wasn't yeah. then. Yeah. And um, I don't know where I was going with that, but moving no, that towards. Was, that's good. Sorry, helpful. I cut you off. Moving towards. <laughs> yeah. Moving towards those emotions to me is the first step. And I know for most people in their, in their healing, um, yeah. if you start with curable and you start with Sarno and you start with Schubiner, you're going to start more with pain reprocessing therapy and, and interrupting the cycle of pain and I, and pain neuroscience education and yeah. whatnot. And that is a absolutely a must for, to me for healing. Yeah. It's one of the tools that I think we just, we need pain neuroscience education. Yeah. Um, but for me, because I hadn't discovered that there was such a thing, I started with moving towards my emotions and, mm. and writing. And so, so the writing was incredibly powerful for mm. me, the journaling and being able yeah. to identify what was actually, what was actually behind this yeah. thing that I'm labeling as yeah. shame or what is behind mm. this anger that, that is actually maybe fear, you know, it's, it's so often that we're mislabeling or, or maybe there's, there's multiple layers to the way that we're feeling. And for me, that writing was just such a huge blessing and tool. And, and, and to me, that's the, the, um, the most important part that leads us to Christ, that leads us to mm -hmm. God in these conversations. Because mm -hmm. the way that I journal and the way that I have people journal is to yeah. is to really, first it's like, okay, what, what's the brain dump? What is everything mm -hmm. related to this thing? And then how do I feel like the true emotions? And we talk about this a lot in, in mm -hmm. healing, feel to heal and, and yeah. letting them be present in our bodies. But then, the, but then to me as a Christian, I don't think God leaves us in that space. He has, yeah. he has something for us in that space. And, and generally yeah. it's either him coming alongside us and saying, Hey, let me love you in this. Yeah. Or it's him saying, actually, there's a better way. Mm. Let's go, let's go this way. Let's, let's change our thoughts. Let's rewire your brain. Let's change the neural pathways towards mm. this way. And he, um, I just feel like he's very often, <laughs> He's always, he is always faithful. I don't yeah. always hear clearly, but yes, he is, yes. <laughs> he is faithful to show me, um, what is truth, uh, yeah. in that space. So yeah. have you done much writing? You know, I, I definitely started with the journaling stuff. Journaling is really hard for me. 
Yeah. Um, I just don't like it. Not in the, like, I would, I think I would rather talk it out than journal okay. it out. Um, yeah. and so I don't know, I, I, you know, I've heard that like resistance to the work in quotations can be in itself, like a symptom. Um, yeah. so I, so I don't, I think sometimes with writing, it's like, I just, I think faster than I write. And so then sometimes it's just, it's like the scribble. I'll do the scribble rather than trying to actually write it, you know, write it out. And I've Uh had some, yeah, I've had some very good success. So yeah, I don't journal much right now. Um, yeah, I I know it's good. I just don't like, I don't like it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, um, yeah. The, the other day I had, so I, there's just a lot changing in my life. And so the last, the, like the last month and a half I've been, I can just, I've just felt everything. And, um, mm. and I, I love Dan Buglio and, um, you know, he had a, a video of where he's like, you know, life can be so much stuff can keep me going on, but it doesn't have to mean that it, you know, there's more intense physical symptoms happening at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And I w- was having time with God and, um, and I said it out loud. I was like, you, cause you mentioned the trust piece. I was like, God, I don't trust you. And I yeah. don't actually think that you have anything good for me. And I think for me to just say it, yes. like God already knew that's how I felt, you know? Yeah. And I think they're like saying it. I was like, Oh, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm thankful yeah. for, you know, my parents are pastors and, and I, I, I've never been like, you can't tell God what no one has ever same, like said that to me. I think yeah. probably in the back of my mind though, sometimes I'm like, uh, do you really want me to say like exactly what it is that I'm feeling? But releasing that without any of my situation changing, I just, I mean, there was such a change in my body and then just like the anxiety I had been feeling, it just started to release. And so I, you know, I think maybe sometimes for me, like just processing in the, like in the morning is when I, you know, I'll go sit in the back and get like morning sun and just kind of mm. process mm-hmm. with God. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And so it was, I think that's one of the most impactful things probably in the last year that's happened with like being really, really confrontive with like, what is it that I feel? And yeah. it's like, cause I kept saying like, you know, God, I'm, I'm doing what I feel like you've been asking of me, I'm trying to be obedient. And so like, I've just been kind of foggy and I freeze. Like when stuff Mm. goes down, I'm just, I freeze. I become very disengaged to life, to what I'm feeling. Like, I'm just like, I'm gonna go lay down. Um, so it was, but I, yeah, I just felt, and I wasn't doing it for symptom relief, right? Like that wasn't my goal. Yeah. Um, but how beautiful to kind of come after that, I was able to then be like, no, God, but I, I know this about you. So I actually know yeah. that deep down, I do trust you. Like I made this huge decision because I heard you say it. So if I didn't trust you, I wouldn't have done it. Like, you know, and, yeah. but, but kind of bringing my thoughts back into alignment with who God is. Yeah. As well yeah. as being very honest and very real about what it is that my current thoughts were you know, which I know is why, you know, journaling and all that is so important to just get it out. Yeah, you're right. It's that, it's that realness that, that for me, the writing does is allow me to dig and get to the realness. Mm -hmm. And, And maybe, I mean, as we're talking about this, I'm realizing maybe it's because for the longest time, I I didn't know how to be real with what I was Mm. really feeling because culture doesn't encourage that and rightfully so, right? We shouldn't, you don't want to yell at your friend who was late for lunch. That's not the answer. (laughs) And and that's, I think something people get confused about this a little bit too, is being honest and raw and real with the things like you're saying, like, I'm angry at God, or I don't trust you, or I hate this person, um, is, is not, um, the end. It, it's the beginning. It, it's, mm, it's just the good. getting it out there so that we can then 
change or own it or, mm. and, and that's where I, I think, I think that my approach is different than most TMS approaches. Cause most of them yeah. are just you say how you feel. That's, that's the end, which does, it does have, um, a release. Yeah. But, but, but mm, I don't want to live in this constant having to release that feeling. I want to rewire my brain. I want to know mm. the truth that I can be busy and not yeah. be in urgency mode. I can, I can yeah. be slow and busy. I can be, <laughs> yeah, I can be calm and busy. And that's, it's such, we, it's, it's such a practice to learn how to do, mm-hmm. but it is beautiful mm-hmm. when, when, yeah. when I do implement that, I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there, so you mentioned releasing or processing these things with God. Um, and I know fear is like a big one for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you don't, I, however you feel comfortable sharing, but like in your own life or just ways that you process with clients, like what does it practically mean to like lean into God with that fear and then let him take it with you and, and then reprocess that neural pathway. Yeah. Yeah. Big question. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. So uh, I'll tell you what it meant for me was, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I was definitely in, in counseling mm-hmm. and also um, doing the writing and okay. um, many things to where to where I could start to identify okay I have a pattern of feeling fear of rejection for saying something stupid let's just use yeah. that as an example yeah. a very real example yeah. and so so what what does god have to so taking the time to explore that in whatever way that means that whatever way is efficient and works for you and identifying okay what's what what is it that i believe mm-hmm in this, what, what is it in this that I believe? And, you know, it's that like, okay, well then I'm not going to have a good, I don't know. They're going to think of me poorly. Now I'm my, Mm. my reputation is, um, tarnished, um, because now I'm stupid. Here's the first claim that's false. Uh, I'm stupid. Also I'm unlovable because I'm stupid Mm-hmm. And, you know, getting down to, okay, well, what are, what are the false things that I believe out of this? Yeah. And then saying, okay, what, well, what is the truth? And, and for me, that writing, the way that I did my writing was three parts. And that third part, in the same way that we're kind of listening to our subconscious as in the emotions mm-hmm. that are not resolved and giving them space to get out on a piece of paper. Yeah. I also actually believe that God has been teaching us things um, over time. And so I, I allow just kind of my pen to like, what do I know to be true? What, what over yeah. the years has God shown me to be true that I have not again, not processed, not dealt with. Yeah. So hopefully by the end of that third piece, I have, I, I don't know that I ever have not come to a place where God is like, Hey, there's going to be times that you might feel a little bit alone and you're yeah. not alone. Mm. Or you know, let's just use that as an example. There's many yeah. different you know, and I like to, to, for myself, I like to come up with a short summary of that last piece of writing. What is something, mm. just a nugget that God shows me, but yeah. then we're talking about a rewiring, right? Cause my brain yeah. is wired to create physiological organ responses in my body and to mm. send the danger signal of pain. Yeah. So this uh, you're like a machine in a sense it is it is Mm -hmm. set up to run that way and this is why it's not your fault you're set up to run this way but now you have been shown Mm -hmm. these tools that we have and so now we we get a choice to 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 change and rewire but how do we do that right um and and I do think the first step is honesty like we're talking about and then I Mm -hmm. I personally have something I call the plan plan which Mm -hmm. is um what are the pieces or the the people and the places that for me, that thing is a trigger? Where, where does this show up in my life that let's call it people pleasing or mm-hmm. social anxiety or something? Yeah. Where does it show up in my life? And I'll pick like three places of where I know that that is a, my, my body is going to respond in this way until I tell it differently. Mm-hmm. And so that's the P the L is what's my new language. Maybe it's as simple as I, I am loved. 
I mm. am cherished by God regardless of when I say ridiculous things. Yeah, the right. new A, yeah, because it's gonna happen, right? It's gonna happen. Yeah. So the P L and then the A is my new attitude and my new sensation. So the next time I'm in a, a social situation, what's the new sensation? And I practice mm. these things. I mean, I visualize mm. and I will. I visualize myself being in a scenario where I would be triggered. I put my body in in the new sensation, the space that I that I am planning for it to be, mm. and I practice. I practice changing how my body responds. I practice my new attitude. I practice the truth. Um, mm. And at times when I was healing, wow. I would write essays, and I would I would write mm. essays to myself of okay, this people pleasing piece. What are three scenarios? And I do three paragraphs. I would never share any of them with anybody because the grammar is so terrible. The sentences <laughs> do not make sense. And that's not the point, you know? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So that's like kind of my my practical way of rewiring mm. so that when I am then in that situation, I've been here before and succeeded. If, yeah. Even though it was in a practice scenario, I've my brain mm. is like, oh, I've done this before. She knows mm. how to trust God. In this, yeah, yeah. I think we'll operate in this way. So for mm-hmm. me, that that is um, a helpful part. So maybe that in yeah. curable, that would probably be visualization, maybe or graded gotcha. imagery. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's that's really great. And I think, uh, yeah, we love. Um, why can't it's not an acrostic? What is it? Lacrosse. P L A P L A N. It's a. Yeah. Oh, acronym. Okay. Thank you. I was like, I cannot yeah. think of the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Acronyms are so helpful to remember, remember, yeah. ring some of those things. I'm reading, um, JP Moreland, um, wrote a book about, um, he had really intense, um, anxiety attacks and mm. he is a um, theologian out of Biola and oh, he's okay. a chemist as well. Um, mm. and he, uh, one of the things he, I'm only in chapter three and I'm just like soaking it up, but he talks about a lot of times too, how there's a lot of things that we tend to feel about ourselves. That is like a collective, like the average person feels this like, and, and so sometimes he talks about like, when I start feeling, you know, maybe I, maybe I'm having this really intense negative thought about myself. Um, and it's like learning how to navigate, like, actually, this is something that like everybody kind of feels in this situation. And so I don't think I actually hate myself. I think I've like, I've just learned how to have this like thought in this situation, kind of like what you're talking about. And so recognizing like, okay, this actually doesn't mean anything about me. I've been trying this lately. That's why I'm saying it. Um, This doesn't actually have to say anything about me. It's just that this is how I've learned how to, how to re respond to this situation. And so, and then, yeah, like you're saying, like, how do I want to respond to this? What are some actually helpful thoughts I could have towards the situation? Um, you know, and it's not yeah. like a sure, surefire plan every single time for me, you know, and it's like I ace it every time. But um, I love that having a plan. I love that having like a preemptive strategy because we yeah. know we're going to we can't avoid triggers our whole life and we can't avoid, you know, right. scenarios in life that are going to be painful and stressful and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but we can navigate, you know, how we're going to respond to that. So I love that. That's really that's super helpful. Yeah, I for me, the sentence, I am safe even when, is mm. is really helpful, mm. which is a little bit of a tangent of what you were just talking about. But essentially, like, I am safe even when my inner voice is mean. Mm. I, I am safe even when I am rejected. I am safe even when yeah. I do sound stupid uh, or, you know, whatever the lie is yeah. that you believe. Yeah. I am safe even when I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. uh, can, can really help but yeah and you bringing up that whole inner language that the monologue we have the way we treat ourselves yeah. is to me one of the four things that just really is a fuel for danger in our bodies yeah, <laughs> totally. our, our own voice is the is the meanest one of all the voices that you'll hear <laughs> yeah yeah it's a battle for sure yeah it's a battle yeah for people that you encounter that are a little bit more resistant to being willing to like go into those emotions, are there any ways that you kind of navigate some of that? Yeah, that's difficult. Um, I think the first thing to ask is what is the resistance 
Um, yeah. And yeah. I and I even have to remind myself of this constantly. Move towards, move towards mm-hmm. anything and everything. You know, if you're like, yeah, if, if you're like, I don't like public speaking, move towards it. If you don't like, I don't know. <laughs> I want to use writing, but I'm not trying to point you out. Um, no, no, you're good. <laughs> there's, you know, I there's, don't. <laughs> there's, there's some things that we don't like because we just don't like them. And right. that's just a preference thing, although right. it is wired and learned, but totally. which is really empowered totally. for empowering for me to realize is like, oh yeah. my goodness, all my preferences, mm. all the things like I am who I am because of things that happen around me and my brain wired that I liked that thing because of what happened Crazy. around it. It's so, it wow. is so cool. I just yeah. totally derailed myself from, did you ask me a question? I know I just um, went on a uh, You were saying uh, uh, moving towards everything. Yeah. I, I think the moving towards the fears is, yeah. is the first thing. And that's the same as, as resistance. So moving towards it, like Okay. So in session the other day, I definitely um, had somebody say exactly like you just said about the writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm having some resistance to it. And so we actually did writing together on like, well, what's mm-hmm. the resistance? Mm-hmm. And there was a huge nugget in there of, of something that needed to be discovered mm-hmm. before she started writing. And well, again, I'm not saying that writing is the only way. I'm just saying that if yeah. we have like, if there's a resistance to it, that is an avoidance um, totally. because it's a trigger, Good. then, then it is something that the brain is in the same way. It, it takes these sensations that are normal, like using your yeah. spine and, and right. is afraid of them and creates mm. pain out of them. Yeah. The brain can do the same thing for things like being in social situations or yeah. going to a therapist or writing or, or all these yeah. things. So yeah. I feel like a big part of healing is just moving towards <laughs> mm. No, it's good. It is good. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, everything I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm terrified of, and it's like you kind of just have to start. Yeah, emotionally or just everything else in life. It's yeah, that's really good. And and with a gentleness too. I I, I want gent- Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. A- yeah, yeah, yeah. Not shaming ourselves through it. Like I just. Yeah. I just need to just. All right, here we go. Fear. Yeah, I I yeah. often think of there's just the fruits of the spirit move with those. Um, and don't, don't, don't move towards the fears. If you're, if you're not able to do it with gentleness and kindness, because that's just going to wire it as even more scary. And, um, so that's really good. Yeah. Well, so we talked a little bit about, um, you just mentioned it, the fruits of the spirit. I would love if you could take us through, you kind of have a, what, what do you call it? Um, a, a somatic practice with the fruits of the spirit. And yeah, so I've, I have, I don't even have a recording of this oh. ev- anywhere. So ah. I, w- Whitney and I had talked about this a little bit beforehand. So I think I'll just do just maybe just two of the fruits of the spirit. It normally takes about 15 minutes. So we'll just do a short one and I'm definitely going to go into kind of like, um, breathing meditation mo- mode. So love bear it. with me. Um, I love it. but yeah, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and actually kind of start us with prayer. Love it. And if that's all right with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, God, we just, um, we just know that you are present and we know that you love us and Part of healing is is learning to or teaching our bodies to believe the things that we claim and the things we say. And so um, I just want to submit this time to you as we just do this somatic exercise with the fruits of the spirit that are gifts from you. So go ahead and just find a place that is comfortable for you. Maybe even pause this while you find a place. Getting yourself quiet to listen. We often don't create the space in our lives to be still before the Lord. 
So once you've found a comfortable place, just taking a few deep breaths in. I personally like to breathe into my stomach, kind of stretching the diaphragm. And exhaling fear. And I'm going to just lead us through the fruits of the spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so starting with love, just breathing in his love. Breathing it into your stomach. Breathing it into your head. Kind of imagining his love in your hands and your feet. And allowing yourself to hear and know the truth that I am loved because of God. If you're by yourself, it can be powerful to say this out loud. Doing a quick body scan to check and see if you have any emotions that are contrary to love in your body, into your torso area. Maybe that would feel like tightness in the chest or a pit in the stomach. Just noticing them. And then breathing in again, God's love into that space. Not necessarily chasing away the emotion, but allowing God's love to meet it. And then joy. Just slightly lifting your face just a little bit almost like you're showing your face to the Lord and allowing his joy to fall on your countenance. Even maybe choosing to turn your mouth up a little bit into a smile. Letting your body echo the truth that I can allow joy because it is a gift. And then the next one is peace. Letting calm fall and flow into your veins. It helps me to picture that peace that passes understanding in my arteries flowing. For me, it helps to imagine it's warm. Knowing the truth that I do have access to peace that passes understanding. And again, noting any thoughts that you have that are noisy. Where are they? Maybe it's just feels clustery in your head or tension in your back. Allowing God's peace. Again, breathing in God's peace into those thoughts. He is peace. And maybe again saying out loud, I have peace. Uh, 
and then patience. He is slow to anger. He is patient. And allowing that character of his to be and to be embodied in your energy. Letting go of urgency. Allowing slow. Believing the fact that I can take my time because he is leading me in the perfect timing. Especially for those of us who want to pressure the healing journey to be faster. I can trust his timing. I can be patient. I can allow my body and my nervous system to enjoy that. If you're actually listening and partaking, you might want to just pause and just let yourself sit in that for a little bit until you're ready to come out. As I'm not going to go through the rest of them. Just take your time. Knowing his goodness. Knowing his kindness. His faithfulness. His gentleness and a sound mind, which is a huge gift. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. That was really good. I love that. <laughs> I loved it. I'm relaxed now. I know. You know, it's always I actually enjoy doing it for myself also. Yeah. Not just listening to it. Totally. Yeah, totally. Um, so can you um share with everyone where they can find you and oh yeah um, yeah. yeah um my website is thoughtbythoughthealing.com and my email is the same thoughtbythoughthealing at gmail.com which is a mouth well it's pretty easy to say but it's it's hard yeah. to type out it's like the longest <laughs> website ever um and uh, I have a yeah I have a YouTube channel and a podcast called thought by thought healing and I'm also in the Instagram um, and Facebook I just post little tidbits of either science or gospel on nice. those two those two platforms awesome. on a basically a daily basis. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. This was definitely really fun to get to kind of add this this faith perspective to it. I think it's so yeah. I think I I know we we both feel this way. Um there's a lot of times people are like, well, you know call it God, call it the universe, call it your higher self and, you know, those kind of things. And I just think it's, it's extra imperative, especially in these times to, to really understand, like, it's not one name in different forms. It's right. It is how God created us and how he created our minds and our brains. So it's, um, yeah, an honor to get to get to talk to you about this. I really appreciate it. Like what you hear so far? Click the subscribe button and give me a rating and review. And let's keep this conversation going. You can find me on social media at Whitney Wood Music. You can find any of my latest singles out anywhere that you stream or purchase music under Whitney Wood, as well as my latest passion project. It's a kid's EP called BB and Bubba. I'll have the links below so you can find them. Have a great week, everybody.